Hoyoverse has expanded as a company a lot, and after many, many years, Honkai Star Rail has done what Genshin Impact has been scared to do for such a long time, which is put an actually real fox girl in the game that's not a yokai. I, I can't help it, man. I'm down bad. By the time you've pulled Ting Yoon, it's already too late for you. You've become a meta player. Crazy how your team just became Sila, Bronya, Ting Yoon, and Bailu. And whoa, look at that. Your Spiral Abyss clears are all national team. That's crazy. Welcome to hell, gamer. This is how to increase the size of your damage by 10 times. Results may vary. I wanted to make this video because one I need that sweet ad revenue baby but also because I've seen a little bit of misinformation about how to build Ting Yun being spread around the community and I feel like with a platform like this I should use it to make sure people are getting the right info so anyways you don't really need me to tell you how good this character is right like you just know I'll tell you anyways here's my Ting Yun guide I'm gonna go over everything about the character as I usually anyways my name is Braxophone and let's talk about Ting Yun This hardworking fox lady is arguably the best four star in the game as of launch, and it's pretty clear why. Ting Yun is able to support a whole family of four due to both her absurd buffs and the income she makes from selling pictures of Jing Yun. Her skill is a buff that she can give to one ally at a time. The benediction buff increases an ally's attack, but it is limited by Ting Yun's attack stat, which basically just means that Ting Yun will be a character that needs to stack a lot of attack on her relics, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this buff is insane. It lasts for three turns, meaning that for one skill point, you're getting a bunch more damage on your carry. And just as a side note, it can only be active on one character at a time. Now, in my opinion, you can get a lot more value out of these buffs if you just make sure to use that character that is buffs ultimate before the next character's turn starts. The reason being that in this turn-based game, your turn isn't over until the next character's turn starts. You can see in this clip that I get four attacks off with Sila before Ting Yun's last turn buff expires because I was able to use Sila's ultimate before the turn actually came to an end, so it retained the buff the entire time. It also has an effect that deals bonus lightning damage whenever the buffed character attacks, and it's based on the buffed character's attack stat, so it adds up to be a fair bit of extra damage. A quick fun fact about this is that it also inherits crit stats of the ally, so if you have a crit build on your damage dealer, this bonus lightning damage will also deal higher damage as well. Now on top of that, Ting Yun also adds a fair bit of damage with her own basic attacks. She has a talent that can activate the extra damage, so basically whenever she attacks and there's an ally that has the blessing, the same effect is going to trigger, just scaling off of her talent level instead of her skill. On top of her skill being a big attack buff with extra damage, her ultimate increases her damage by a lot more by giving damage bonus, which is an even stronger buff than the attack one. But with that said, arguably the best part of her ultimate isn't even the damage buff. I mean, it is really, really nice, don't get me wrong. But her ultimate also gives 50 energy to their bank, making her act as a portable battery. Yeah, Merlin looks kind of weird here. It does cost a lot of energy to use and only lasts for two turns, but it's very strong, and outside of battle, you can also use Ting Yun's technique to regenerate 50 of her energy, so at the very least, you can have her ultimate ready on turn 1 if you absolutely need to. And now, on top of all of that, her traces also add a fair bit of value. She has a very high base speed starting at 112, and with this trace, she's able to get 20% more speed for the turn following her skill. She also has a trace that gives her 5 energy at the start of her turn, which helps a ton with battery. And her last trace increases her basic attack damage, which normally wouldn't affect much, but since you'll be using her basic attacks fairly often, it actually does add up. One of the best parts about Ting Yun is that leveling up her ultimate and skill increases how effective her buff is, so you're going to want to level those first, with her talent after. You also do eventually want to level her basic, since you will be using it a lot. This character honestly just brings so much value to the table, it's kind of unfair. You're going to be using her way into late game to buff your main damage dealer, and like Bennett from Genshin Impact, she's going to be a unit that's on tons of teams. And she gets even better with Eidolons, so before I talk to you about her build, let's talk about if they're worth pulling for. So if you're giving Jing Yun all of your money, like I am, then you're in for some Ting Yun Eidolons. Or at least, hopefully you are, since they're pretty damn good. Her E1 makes it so that after an ally with Ting Yun's Benediction uses their ultimate, they get a 20% speed increase for one turn, which allows them to move sooner and can add up to more attacks over a longer fight. This Eidolon doesn't see immediate results due to how action value works, but over the course of a few cycles, that speed increase can add a lot of value. Her E2 gives 5 energy after a character with Benediction defeats an enemy, up to once per turn. Basically, this is just 
just another way to get Tingun's ult up faster, and it's pretty dang good. E3 is an ult and basic attack level up, which adds more value to Tingyun as a buffer, but also her personal damage will increase a fair bit because, as I mentioned before, you're going to be using her skill once and her basic attack about twice between each skill. E4 is a buff to the extra damage done by Tingyun's Benediction buff. Basically, the extra lightning damage that comes out scaling off of the buffed ally's attack gets increased. It's a pretty solid Eidolon and adds a lot of value. E5 is a skill and talent level up, which is pretty solid, and her sixth and also, in my opinion, her best Eidolon makes it so that Tingyun's ult gives an ally 60 total energy instead of 50, which is a pretty solid buff and can make cycling your ult even easier. Keep in mind that a lot of characters do have over 100 cost ultimates, and if they average around 120, then this basically is half of your energy bar. Overall, you don't need Tingyun Eidolons to make her good, since she's already broken at E0, but E6 will make her support capabilities a lot stronger, and unlike some people say about Bennett, you always want to activate Tingyun's E6. Next up, let's go over Tingyun's best build so I can show you exactly the best stats to use to get the most value out of her without missing out on any potential damage or energy. Tingyun is a character that is not super complex to build, but lots of people have questions about her, like if she runs speed boots, lightning damage sphere, if you build energy regen rope, and more things like that. So in this section, I want to go over her best sets and stats to help you build her to have the best buff. If you're early on, building her with anything attack percent is going to work just fine. But when you can farm relics for her, you're definitely going to want to get yourself a four-piece wild wheat. It's going to give her some attack bonus on the two-piece, which she needs. And on the four-piece set, she gets a speed buff and some basic attack damage bonus. Bonus. The basic attack bonus isn't huge, but because Tingyun is a character that will use her basic attacks a fair bit, it ends up being worth the small buff. For her main stats, since her buff is limited by how much attack she has personally, you want her to have an attack percent body piece. It's pretty straightforward, but next step is boots. A lot of people advocate for attack percent here, but you're actually going to want to run speed. Speed allows you to attack more frequently on Tingyun, and since her three turn buff is based on the character it's attached to, as opposed to Tingyun's personal turns, having Tingyun attack more is actually okay for the buff. What what happens when Tingyun attacks more is she generates more skill points overall, but she also generates more total energy towards her ultimate, which means even more buffs. Once you've gotten her past 134 speed, she gets one extra action in cycle 0, cycle 3, and cycle 6, which is 50% more actions than she would normally be taking. Speed is definitely the way to go. For your planar set, you have a couple of options, but the best one overall is going to be Fleet of the Ageless, which is going to give your whole team a buff just for bringing her speed to 120. You can use Space Ceiling Station for even more attack, but you'll reach a high enough attack stat on her without it, because on her sphere, you're also going to be running attack. Some people advocate for Lightning Damage, which does help her personal damage output, but remember that her skill's buff limiter is her personal attack. And overall, you can get more value buffing your main damage dealer while building attack on Tingyun. For the rope though, I recommend Energy Regen, which is going to help you get your ultimate in about one turn less, and sometimes two, depending on how much damage Tingyun takes. Between ER rope and speed boots, your ultimate uptime should still be pretty solid while you're able to maintain a high attack buff. So overall, the best build for Tingyun is going to be 4 piece wild wheat with attack percent body, speed boots, and fleet of the ageless with attack percent sphere and energy regen rope. Focus on speed, attack percent, and effect resistance substats, and with this build and high investment, you're able to optimize Tingyun's buff while also getting her ultimate out frequently and quickly. Now before we move on, one other set that I did want to mention is the wind set eagle of twilight line since i mentioned it in my other support guides a lot of characters can get value out of it because it moves your action forward 25 percent after ulting this also applies to tingyun but since tingyun has so much synergy with wild wheat between the basic attack buff speed buff and attack i highly recommend it over eagle of twilight line now that's not to say that eagle is bad and you'll probably see some people using it in the future for some niche strats but for now wild wheat is the safer bet sprightly is a decent planner set on her two that i wanted to briefly touch on it makes you move your action forward 40% right at the start of the battle, and it doesn't refresh over different waves of enemies. It also gives you energy regen, and for that reason, it can actually be decent on Tingyun. But it's worth noting that the action forward, unless you're playing with Sila or someone that has a higher base speed than Tingyun, ends up being kind of useless. Ideally, you can use Tingyun's buff before your damage dealer comes out, but because Tingyun is already so fast with base 112 speed, you're not going to really have a problem with her going first unless you're playing someone, like I mentioned earlier, Sila, who has an extremely high base speed. So it's not a bad set, but I don't personally recommend it because she just doesn't need it. Now moving on outside of her best relic build, there's some pretty important info about her light cones that I want to go over, including a trap that a lot of people have fallen into. So let's go over light cones next.
This is gonna be a little hard to believe, so uh, just bear with me here. Tingyun's best light cones are actually four-star cones. I know, weird. The thing is, Harmony characters are all about providing buffs to your team, and their light cones also do the same thing. The best Harmony light cone for most characters is Dance Dance Dance, which is a super busted light cone that moves your party's action forward after the wearer uses their ultimate. The thing is, this cone is making your actions come sooner, meaning that you can ult again sooner, dish out more damage in a shorter amount of time, and overall move sooner and more consistently. I've said this before, but if speed is how fast you move in a line, action forward is just skipping a part of the line with the line still moving. It's a broken utility and it's actually game changing. For this reason, this is easily one of the best cones for Tingyun and arguably the very best one. Now the one downside of this cone is that its base attack is a bit on the lower side, meaning it will end up giving Tingyun slightly lower damage and make it a bit harder to scale her buff. But ultimately, more total actions is going to raise your team's overall damage, which makes it easily worth that tiny stat loss. Now if you don't happen to have Dance Dance Dance, you can also make the argument that Carve the Moon with the Clouds is best as well, due to it providing a big buff to your team every turn, and it really is a lot of value for a whole lot of nothing. It has a higher base attack than Dance Dance Dance, and the difference isn't crazy, but it's worth noting. Personally, I've had a lot more success with the turn manipulation of Dance Dance Dance, but the Battle Pass Light Cone is a really solid option for buffs, and could be argued best in slot. The next best cone for Tingyun is going to be But the Battle Isn't Over, and I know some people have said it's her best cone, but that's unfortunately not true a lot of the time. Since it's a 5 star, it has higher base attack, meaning that Tingyun's attack will scale better, but it also gives energy regen and a skill point back every other ult, which is pretty dang solid. Since you're trying to use Tingyun's ult fairly often, realistically, you'll get between 1 and 3 skill points back per fight if you're clearing Memory of Chaos, and the better your team is, the worse the light cone becomes. It's worth acknowledging though that Tingyun doesn't burn a lot of skill points anyways. It also gives 30% damage bonus to the next acting character, which can be generally very strong, but if the next character isn't your carry or damage dealer, the damage bonus gets a lot less value. With characters having different speed stats, their order will shuffle over the next few turns, and at the moment there's not really a way to speed tune Tingyun teams, since she has a trace that changes her speed value. So I personally recommend Dance 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 more, since action forward is actually insane and will raise your team damage more than this light cone, but it still is really solid on her. Now for other light cones, you have things like Memories of the Past, which can be decent for energy if you need it. Meshing Cogs also gives you some energy back, but if you're not having energy issues, you can opt for Chorus, which will increase your ally's attack. The downside of the three-star light cones is that their base attack is pretty low, but they're still a decent free-to-play option. Now, the reason I'm not going over past and future is because it has the same issues that But the Battle Isn't Over has, where you can't control who gets the buff. But it's not useless, it's just a little bit of a wild card. Overall, I highly recommend Dance 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 for the huge amount of damage it will net you with extra attacks over several turns, with Carve the Moon Weave the Clouds being another great option if possible. Don't be trapped into thinking that five-star light cone is always better, because some of these four stars are really amazing. Next up, I don't feel that Tingyun team building is too complicated, but I'll go over a few examples so that you can get a good idea of how she works in tandem with other characters and how she can best fit her role. When you're building teams for Tingyun, they're actually really, really simple because she has one major role that she wants to play in basically every single team. So when you have someone like Tingyun in your team, the whole point of her is going to be to buff one particular character and focus on that one single character for the entirety of every fight that you're in. This basically means that you're building a hyper carry team and you can pick any character that deals a lot of damage to be the main character that you focus on. For example, if you're a fan of best girl like I am, you can pick someone like Shusong and you can actually giga buff her with Tingyun. As I said before, the main idea is that you want to just take a character that already does a lot of damage or is already meant to be a solid damage dealer and just buff the ever-living heck out of them. That's why for most of this video you've seen me playing Zilla because she is also probably the best target for Tingyun in the game right now. But just for an example, let's use Susong, Tingyun, and then we want another character that can be a buffer. So this could be if you don't have a lot of character options. This could be someone like Asta. This could be someone like Bronya. This could be a debuffer like Pela if you want to use her as well. And to at the moment, those are pretty much the main three characters, but just for free-to-play friendliness, I'll go ahead and pick Asta. And for the fourth slot, you want to basically pick a character that's going to help you survive. If you have someone like Japard, who has really good uptime in later content when you give him energy regen rope and he's able to constantly take damage, meaning he generates energy on hit, then Japard is also really good for this spot. Alternatively, you have Bailu, you have Natasha, and you have Fireblazer. Now, Fireblazer is going to make this really, really hard to stay alive over long periods of time, but if you're just doing Forgotten Hall, Memory of Chaos, 
chaos, whatever it may be, that also works. So basically you just need a sustaining unit and yeah, we'll go ahead and use Natasha for this example, I guess. But the whole point is you want two characters that are going to help buff your main carry and then a character that's going to keep your team alive because honestly no team can sustain infinitely without a healer or a shielder. I just know for a fact what you guys is going to test that theory and then like make a post and at me in my discord. But like, I'm not going to be mad about it because you're incredibly based for joining the discord in the first place. Link in the description, by the way. But anyways, you can take other characters like this too. Scylla is one of her best partners in the entire game because Scylla gets multiple attacks under one turn if you use her ultimate or if you have resurgence. And that means that Ting Yun's buff actually gets more value on Scylla than it does for many other characters, which is why you see Ting Yun and Scylla teams. And then of course, if you have someone like Branya, you basically have a huge buff on Scylla from Ting Yun. You have her ultimate, which can be another huge buff on Scylla. And then you have Branya, who is a buff for Scylla and then, uh, you know, another buff for your whole team, but also Scylla. Basically, any character that comes out and does a lot of damage, including Jingyuan, this is this is Jingyuan now. I've decided. Including Jingyuan is probably going to get value from Tingyun. Now, I'm not going to say that this is going to be Jingyuan's best energy because, like, I, I genuinely don't know at this point. He's not out. But anyone who deals damage, including Welt, including Clara, including Don Hung, all these characters can deal tons of damage because they scale off of attack, which Tingyun provides. And yeah, overall, she's a super flexible unit. You just kind of shoo her into a lot of teams. The other nice thing about Tingyun is that she's very skill point positive. You use buff for one turn and then use basic attack for two turns, which means that she's gaining a skill point on average, which is pretty damn good and helpful for a lot of teams so with that said she may not be the most flexible character because you can basically only play her in one team setup right now because her buff only can go onto one character however the team that she enables is so important to this game and to being able to clear the hardest content that it doesn't really matter you just throw her on with any damage dealer Zilad, Serval, Welt, Clara, Sushong, uh, literally anyone and, and she can be amazing so that's basically it for teams. Tingyun is an amazing character with amazing buffs and you're definitely going to want her on your account regardless of where you're at in the game because eventually she becomes a character that you can shoe into any team to increase your damage as long as you have attack scaling characters which at the moment there's a lot of. It's easy to watch a YouTube video and go oh that person's just over hyping that character like they do every other character but truly Tingyun is the real deal. She is amazing and will drastically improve your account and your damage. So anyways I hope that this is all helpful to you and that you can build Tingyun now and if you've enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe uh, like the video, leave a comment with your favorite recipe because I need something good for dinner tonight, and I'll catch you guys next time.